Welcome to another monthly look back at the recent releases from Games Workshop. We're only looking at the skirmish and box game lines, so none of the big war games, but still plenty to look at. The idea here is to dial back on the hype for the upcoming releases and rehype for some of the stuff that we actually can get our hands on now. It's also a good way to see what's happening across the lines. I usually find a few things that I miss each month every time I do these videos. We start with the new Warhammer website. While it is certainly pretty, it is a little trickier to navigate and there are a bunch of updates the web team need to work on. For example, when I look for the Undead Blood Bowl team, I couldn't find it under the Blood Bowl section, but it does show up if I look for the search. Anyway, lots of people have talked about the problems. What's exciting for us is you can now buy Forge World from this one store. That's super useful for me as someone not in the UK. I can get my Forge World minis as part of the normal delivery, and even better, I can get them delivered to my local store for free shipping regardless of the order size. Hopefully this overall update has improved the backend of the website, and the team can resolve the, the issues that people are having. As a side note, we've also moved into a phase where we're seeing all the pre-orders up for two weeks. Again, this seems to be an issue related to general production, and hopefully that's something that GLD will improve on in the future. October has been an amazing month for Warcry. There was some speculation that the Terrain Pack, Scales of Talaxis, and the Hunter and Hunted box were originally intended to be a single box. Whether that's the case or not, the combination is a pretty good way to get started. Unfortunately, Scales of Talaxis does look like it was a relatively small production run, and it's gone from the main store, but you can still find it in local stores if that's something you're interested in. Hunter and Hunted has two fun-looking warbands that I've covered in another video. We also get the Cruel Boys Monster Killers and the Vulcan Flame Seekers, who get standalone Warcry boxes. Again, we did videos for each of these, so you can check them out. That does leave us with another order and another death warband due for release in winter, based on that roadmap. Although I wouldn't be too shocked if they pushed back into the new year. I don't recall any spoilers for what that might be, so that's something to look forward to. We've also had two big releases, which at the time we didn't know were for Warcry. Due to an early post, we now know that the cities of Sigmar models, which recently released, are going to get Warcry rules, which we expect to be going up around the 9th. I've just pictured the command team here, but it is a full faction release, which has a ton of new profiles. It also splits out the Dwarf and Dark Elf parts of the cities of Sigmar into their own warbands with their own abilities. Due to what seems to be the changes in the way points were calculated, there is some speculation that we might see an upcoming FAQ or Tome of Champions, which would really be awesome. I'll be talking about the City of Sigmar more once the PDF is released, but the models are already available there to pick up. We also got Warcry rules for the Black Talons on Warhammer Community. These are the stars from the recent Warhammer Plus show, which I did go back and watch over the last few days, and I have to admit I have really enjoyed it. Again, we did a video on this box. Each of the fighters are quite powerful in their own right, but it is quite tricky to tinker with, as you can only take one of them, they're unique, and they are quite large in points. Finally, for Warcry, we also got a bunch of old Underworlds warbands go up as model-only releases to coincide with the upcoming White Dwarf rules. While there have been rules for the warbands at the top, the four on the bottom are the infamous Nether Maze warbands, which got skipped over for actual rules, and we're finally getting those in the upcoming White Dwarf. Personally, I'm super excited about finally getting the official rules for Hexbane's Hunters, which I know have been super popular because a lot of people have been asking for it. Moving on to Necromunda, we have a bundle of releases, the main one being the third part of the Arathian Succession, the Ruins of Jardlin. As before, this has a campaign, which in this case focuses on waypoints, which are similar mechanically to territory, but also influence the battle when they're being fought over. Rules are focused on the Van Sar, who we'll look at in a second, Squats, who get a cool set of special characters, and an awesome looking Scavlin Explorator, which is a very cool looking resin mini tank. Palanite Enforcers get a hint of an upcoming release of a Taurus Venator, which is like a dune buggy with a mounted gun. No word on it yet, fingers crossed it'll be plastic, but it is likely to be resin like the Explorator, I think. Focusing back on the recent releases, there's a new transfer sheet packed with Gang Graffiti, which will look great on new terrain. Delac get a weird with a Cephalopod Spectres, three of them, which I think they're basically servo skulls with squid brains. Nothing suspect about that whatsoever. As I mentioned, the main focus for this book is on Vansar, and they get a bundle of releases along with it. So we've got the usual card packs, upgrade kits for surviving the Ashways, and a very nice plastic kit of two Arachni rigs. There was a resin version of this before, but I believe there have been a few changes, and the rules are slightly different for these ones. Either way, awesome looking models that should be popular with Vansar gangs. 
Notably, this is the first month since I started doing these videos that we haven't had an Apocrypha for Necromunda. Hopefully that's just a minor glitch, as they are an amazing addition to the game. For Blood Bowl, not many releases. We just have the resin model for Kiroth Krakenai. This Dark Elf star player has a special ability linked to his fancy mask called Black Ink. Once per game, he can select a player that he is marking and remove their tackle zones until they are next activated. That can be pretty amazing. For a full review of the star player, check out the episode of the Bonehead podcast linked in the description. GW also uploaded a few sets of rules that are Halloween themed, which is very cool. Team selection here is limited to vampires, something undead, necromantic horror, or tomb kings, and has a special weather table, special inducement, and a special rule. I have to admit, I love this kind of thing. It gives a bit of variety, and it's cool for a one-off team game. Looking at Underworlds, we have a new core box, Deck Gorge, which has a Slanesh Warband versus an S Deepkin one. It's also got two new Universal Rival decks, a high-speed Breakneck Slaughter deck, and the spell-heavy Force of Frost deck. There's some very cool-looking models if you're a tentacles enjoyer. It also has a few new boards, which are Sea and Frozen themed, although I gather this is still somehow based in the Norwood. Let's not worry about that too much. You can find the updated rules PDF on Warhammer Community, as well as an update pack, which notably has some changes for the Sons of Velmorn and Greengrax's Loon Court Warbands, which they had said they wanted to buff slightly. We've also got a basic starter box with a new variant. This one is only available in stores like Barnes Noble, and instead of the Far Strider and Sepulchral Guard in the normal one, it's got the Iron Soul Contemptors and Sepulchral Guard. Minor difference. And that's all the major releases. White Dwarf wasn't particularly exciting for me this month. It did include an alternate narrative campaign for Warcry called Sundered Scales, which has some new locations and lesser artifacts. It also has a background and narrative rules for the monster kills and flame seekers. The most interesting piece, I think, was possibly the battle report for the Legion's Burialis, the Garmon Purge. Legions really should have been out by now, and this battle report does look like it was to introduce the next set of releases. It was certainly interesting to see the armies they put together, but I think we really need to see the actual rules to fully understand what was going on. And that's it for October. Notably, no Kill Team this month, which is a bit of a surprise. We have seen previews for the Kill Team Salvation, with the Space Race Scouts facing off against the Striking Scorpions, but rumour is that that release has been pushed out until the start of next year. So it might be a quiet team for Kill Team fans. Perfect to catch up on your unpainted Kill Teams. As we said, the GW release schedule is currently a bit of a mess. One thing that they always do is to calm things down around December. I've been told that this is due to their key demographic. If you're not familiar, GW's primary purchaser is a 40-year-old woman, and mums need a few weeks of calm to get through those lists of Santa. Fingers crossed that that break will let GW get back on track, and we will see the disruptions they've had in 2023 as a thing of the past. October has been a pretty exciting month, for me at least. There's been a ton of Warcry releases, which is one of my favourite games. Kill Team, not so much. And for a few of the other games, it has been kind of slim. But, you know, overall, uh, GW are still doing a pretty good job in supporting all these lines, and I'm looking forward to the future. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week, I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.